Right, this is the control pack that came from uh, China. And uh, these, you know, these are all pretty much uh, generic, really, in what you get. Um, different types of buttons. I've gone for a particular type of button which you can illuminate from underneath, so they're sort of transparent. Um, you know, you don't have to. I just think it sort of looks a little bit, it's a bit gimmicky, I suppose. I'll, I probably will put an on off switch on this. Um, yeah, got a nice kind of gold finish. Um, but as I say, they're all pretty much generic. Uh, you'll see the packs on China, eBay, you know. Um, I think all of that costs around about 50 quid, I think, or just, just under. Um, the, the choice you do get is with the joysticks. Now, I've gone for the traditional kind of cue ball type joystick. Um, but, you, but you can get the rubber sort of joystick which is sort of kind of like the you know almost like the sort of joystick well like the like aircraft type joystick you can get, even get a button on the top if you want depends on what sort of games you want I, I just want to go for a traditional arcade look you know the sort of thing that I remember when I used to do the arcades when I was a kid so yeah that's what you get there you, on the bottom you've got four micro switches so it's obviously not a so it's, a, it's not a digital interface or anything like that and then you get your uh, cue ball that sort of screws on top. Now, the thing that I have to consider with this, and because I've done a little bit of research on it, is I believe, especially because I'm using an 18mm thick MDF, when that goes through there, I think I might have to countersink it. Because, as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, that's not really coming up very... Uh, very high is it so I'm not quite sure if I get away with it let's have a look. set that in the centre if it'll go yeah but it's a little bit low so what people tend to do is on the back here is uh, they sort of countersink this in slightly they, they, they cut around with a router which I haven't got unfortunately and uh, they countersink this in so for me to do that I'm going to have to use uh, something like a keyhole saw drill bit it's not going to be very neat unfortunately but I'm going to have to sort of slightly drill some of that away and uh, put it in in that way, I think. But I think I do. You know, I think I need to do that. Otherwise, it's not really going to be very proud, is it? It's going to look a little bit, uh, a little bit odd, possibly. So, yeah, that's going to be a job for today, just to mark around now and, uh, like I say, do the best I can. It's be a little bit of a botch, unfortunately, but you won't see it because it'll be under underneath. But to uh, you know, to get that looking uh, looking right. So there you go. That's something I can crack on with. So before I get the drill out and start on that, if you look at the control buttons themselves, obviously blue and red. I've got eight separate control buttons. So on the panel here, that's going to be six buttons to um, control the game. Not that you really. I don't think you're ever going to use six buttons. Maybe on Street Fighter or something. But normally you probably only use two. But that's six each side, and that gives me um, that gives me two more. So on the bottom of the cabinet here, um, I've got five holes on the front, and I've also got uh, two holes on the side. Now the ones on the side are purely going to be used mainly for pinball games, because obviously you'd want the uh, rockers on the side there for pinball. So that leaves me the five on the front. So uh, we could use a couple of these there and there. Um, I've also got the very important one and two player buttons as well. So I'm not quite sure yet whether to do one or two buttons, say there, and then put one one there. And then that leaves me a spare hole. Um, and I think for that we're not going to put a button. I think for that one we'll probably get a USB and maybe a headphone socket connector that uh, will come out of the front so, you know, to save me having to keep going around the back and plugging in a USB lead, which I haven't actually got. So, there you go, lots to do, lots of things to work out.
Screaming cat. Because I'm doing making a video. It's screaming, bless it. Goes in the uh it's gonna go into the vets next week and have some teeth out. So uh we'll see if it comes back alive. But anyway, I think for now, as I say we're gonna we're gonna do this. Um it's gonna be a bit of a botch unfortunately, it's not gonna look very neat and tidy, but uh it's gotta be done, so let's uh, crack on with that then. Right, that's that done. Um, doesn't look too bad, does it, really, from the front? Um, shall I show you the back? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Nothing's too pretty around the back, but uh, there you go, that's the back. So, uh, yeah, if you've got a router, then you can do this so much easier and much cleaner. Obviously, you know, I had to use what I had to hand, and uh, that's, hence it's a little bit bodged but you know as I say if you've got a router you can use a router but the uh, you know the effects the same so I've just literally held it in with just a couple of um, rough bolts I want to get some nice kind of dome black dome bolts there to cover those sort of holes a little bit better um, you've got some options here if you are using a unfinished MDF cabinet kit or you're making your own then obviously you, you would need to paint this or perhaps cover it and uh, a lot of people would prepare this and then you can get some um, vinyl artwork to go over this and a lot then a lot of people protect that with a sheet of perspex and it looks really nice actually because obviously if you just put the the vinyl artwork straight on that when people are you know sort of playing the games with quite a bit of vigor because obviously you get well into these games um, the sweat on your palm is going to very quickly wear off the ink on the vinyl. I think the silk screen printed, but it's still going to wear off. Um, personally, I think I think I might leave mine to be honest. Um, I think that you know the effect because I've got this sort of gold around. I think it looked quite nice plain. Um, I can always put vinyl on it at a later date, you know, if I want to. Um, but I think for now. I'm just going to leave mine because it's already got this melamine finish. Seems a shame, doesn't it? You know, paying quite a bit extra to get that finish for the cabinet and then covering it all over with uh, with vinyl. But, you know, each to their own. So, right, that's good. So, as I say, these are sort of just about held in for now. I'm going to get some proper bolts and mount these a bit more securely. But uh, I think next thing now is just to uh, loosely put in the player buttons left and right and, uh, you know, get that and then we can then have a look at the back and sort of uh, see the mess of wiring <laughs> the micro switches the leads that's when I think it's going to get quite messy around the back but uh, we'll approach that one as we get to it I think right I'm going to uh, speed this up a little bit now and I'm going to put those uh, little buttons in building my own cabinet the thing that put me off was drilling all of these holes and getting them all kind of symmetrical and all in the right place because it will show you know if you've got these 
even two or three millimetres out. I mean, even these probably aren't correctly spaced. I can move them around. It, it, it does look a bit odd. And, <laughs> and my woodworking skills, as you saw on the back of this panel, my woodworking skills are shit. I mean, they really are shit. I, 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 do, I know I don't like to swear on these videos, but they are shit. So that was the one thing that put me off. So, you know, if you buy a pre-cut cabinet, even if you just get the plain MDF and you're going to finish it yourself, these are all properly jigged and these are cut symmetrically. Right. I think that looks quite effective, to be honest. You know, once we get the... Uh, so you put a little ball on just to get an idea. It's all kind of... Uh, it's all got to come off again because I haven't got the right bolts in, but it's, uh, it's not a big gobstopper, isn't it? If you're old enough to remember what they are. So let's just whack that on for a sec. There we go. Uh, <coughs> oh, look at that. I've got like a little plas uh, plastic cover to go over that. There we go. How about that? Oh, that f that's starting to feel pretty good, actually. And you see, you know, this is the whole thing about an arcade cabinet. Um, yeah, you, you, you can do the hyper, hyper spin you know, and a hyper sync and, and get all of your games looking good. And you can use an Xbox controller. And I will, I have got a wireless Xbox controller. And uh, I will probably be using that on some of the more complicated games, you know, some of the later PlayStation games and the Sega games. But, you know, if you're going to play the classic arcade games, Street Fighter, for example, um, you know, 1942, stuff like that, this is what it's kind of all about, you know, it's getting this sort of tactile feel of the old sort of, you know, buttons that you would be bashing about on the joystick. And it's that, without that, if, if you remove that and you use, say, a keyboard or even, we'll say, if you just use a controller, yeah, it works, but you're not getting the kind of magic, you're not getting that retro sort of feel. And this is what makes all the difference, is to have these sort of, these reproduction um, sort of buttons. I and mean, they're not going to be as strong as the ones you would have got in the arcade that really but you know they're cheap enough to replace anyway if they go wrong but that, that's what it's all about you know it's getting the reproduction sort of finish um, on the cabinet Well, that's the uh, micro switches put in. A little bit fiddly, to be honest. As you would have seen, and I sped it up, you would have seen that uh, they were a little bit tricky. Right, next thing to look at is the little control board that I have here. And I've got no instructions with this, by the way. <coughs> so... I would have thought that that there might be the joystick port, purely because I've only got one that will fit. So yeah, that will be the that will definitely be the joystick port. 
And then we've got little three prong connectors. Um, K12, K11, ST start, would that be? Uh, right one, left one, right two, left two. K3. Yeah. <laughs> I can you see that? I don't know if the camera's going to focus on it. Um, no instructions at all. So this might have to be an internet job, I think. Just try to work out the wiring on that. Um, let's have a look at these wires, what I've got. So I've also got the LEDs to wire up. So each switch has got four spade connectors. So let's have a look what I get here. I've got three wires. Oh, hang on, this is all daisy chained. Oh my god, what the fuck? Oh, okay. Oh shit. Okay, I've got four connectors, that makes sense. Um, right, okay, so one is a double connector going into the centre part, and then the other two are just two connectors now then. Okay, let's think about it logically. The the LEDs are going to need a return and a live, but the switch is just going to be is just going to return to ground. So, in theory, and I do like theories because they normally get them wrong, as you'd have noticed with this video. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. One's a slightly one's a six mil, and one's looks like a four or five mil spade connector. That makes it a bit easier, I think. So hang on, on the LEDs, I oh know it's the same here actually. Right, hang on, hang on. So the it looks like the switch is the five mil bloody eyes type fuss spade connector. And so if I put that onto there that briefly onto there. Come on. Tighten it. It's already tight. I haven't started yet. So that would go on there. That would go on there. And then that would give me the 6mm to go on the LEDs. I suppose that would... Yeah, that would be okay, wouldn't it? One of these is going to be a ground. That would short... The switch would short across the ground. And then that gets the gr grounding on the, on the LEDs. Does that make sense to you guys? Sort of makes sense to me. Um... And that gives me a three three prong connector, and yeah, R one, left one, L two. Oh, is that R? Oh, is that K? I'm reading that as a K. No, it's definitely R. Don't know. I'm sure these are, are generic board. Um, I'll probably have to Google the. I've got a uh, a number down. I'm probably gonna have to Google that for the wiring. But it appears that the um, the connectors go on anyway. It only it looks like the small f five and then the six. So it looks like they only go on that way. So uh, okay, let's let's get all the wires on and uh, see what we're left with. Okay, that's all the uh, all the wiring on. It was a little bit tricky in places, you know. Um, connection's a bit tight and everything. But uh, so this is the control board, and just got to work out. I'd like to fit it, well, possibly about there. Now one side, this one, one of these is going to be for the joystick, and one's going to be for the USB lead. Until I actually Google this board, I'm not quite sure what that's going to be. But it seems if I was say to fit it there, I think all of these wires, excuse the dog and the toy, she wants me to play, bless her. But if I was to um, put that there, for example, I think, you know, these wires would, should, I think all fit, you know, and uh, 
yeah. So, yeah, it's all going to get a little bit messy, isn't it? <laughs> I like to keep things really neat. Well, I think we'll mount the, so if we mount the board there, um, actually, the one that might be the other side, to be honest, because that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the front. So if the board's mounted over there, everything will sort of go across and then sort of tidy this rat's nest up. So uh, yeah, just got to get ahead and find out the uh, how to wire this. Um, CY822B uh, should be able to find out on the internet fairly uh, fairly easy, I would have thought. So right, I'm going to get on. I don't know if I'm off. I don't know if you can see. I'm off camera actually, but on this side, I just want to get on and uh, put all the other wires on and uh, going to crack on with it. So it's all kind of like a rat's nest of wires at the moment. Well, going to call this one a day now. We are over the 20 minute mark and you must be getting so sick of the sound of my voice. So some good progress done here today. Um, yeah, I've got to work out the wiring on that controller board. Going to go off and sort of Google that. And uh, still got some software issues to sort out. And plenty of uh, sort of revising to do on the software. And I'll show you a little bit of that on the uh, next video next week. But uh, as for now, as always, cheers. Thanks for sticking with it. If you want to see this arcade cabinet develop, then please subscribe. Everybody is welcome. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye now.